everyone. Welcome to the Balance Beam Challenge. Now to do this challenge, you're going to need to find some items from around the house, and you'll probably need some help from an older brother or sister or a parent or guardian to help you find some of the things. Now the first thing you're going to need is a balance beam. So I have three different types that I assembled behind me. The first one are just some bricks, and all I did was line them up. Now I only brought a few because I'm not actually going to use this for my balance beam. I also have a 2x4. This is a piece of wood that I found in my garage that I'm going to use for a balance beam. If you're one of my students, you know that this is what we use during class and probably the best choice if you have one. Now, if you don't have either of these things, a simple way you can do this is just with a piece of tape and just put it along the floor like that. Okay, now, again, I'm ultimately going to use the 2x4. That's what I'd go with if you have one. Now, the next thing you're going to need is some items to place on your head because the challenge is can you make it across the balance beam with the item on your head? And it's not that easy to do, depending on which type of item you find. And just gather lots of things from around your house to try. I brought the first a bean bag. Now, since I'm a PE teacher, I have a lot of these things around my house. But if you don't have something like this, you can make your own. It's pretty simple to do. I found some brown rice in my pantry, put it in a Ziploc bag, and just folded it. And now I have a substitute bean bag. And the next thing I found were some lentils. Lentils are like legumes or little beans, and again, just in a baggie, now I have a little bean bag. Both of these, by the way, are excellent sources of fiber. And I also found a whole wheat bagel, another great source of fiber, that's pretty easy to balance on top of your head. Hey, I also found some little stuffed animals. This one's a little bit flatter, and this one's shaped more like an animal. I think you recognize this guy. Yeah, I also brought some books out. I have different sizes and different textures. And we'll talk about that in the next video. I also have some cones. Now, if you don't have a cone, I have some substitutes you can easily find around your house, such as a little cup, coffee creamer bottle, or a water bottle. Something like this would also work. Okay, and then lastly, I brought a couple different types of balls that I can use. All right, so that's it. Once you gather those items up, You'll be ready to have the challenge, and let me show you how it's done. Now I'm going to move my balance beam a little bit here, so you can hopefully see me a little bit better. All right, so there's my balance beam, and I'm going to start with one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my legumes. I'm going to walk back to the beginning of the balance beam. I'm going to place it on top of my head. Now it's important to remember that once it's on your head, you have to take your hands away, because if you're holding it, it's not much of a challenge. So we're going to take our hands away. And once you have done that, you're going to try to make it all the way to the end of the balance beam without your foot touching the ground. And if you make it, you pass that challenge, and then you can try to move on to something else. So try a different item. This time, I'll go ahead and try the Winnie the Pooh. So here we go. I'm going to put it on top of my head. And you can try it in different ways, too. That's one of the things that's fun about a stuffed animal. So you can try to place it on your head in different ways and see whether that makes it more difficult or easier to do. Now remember, you can't let your foot touch any part of the ground, and you have to make it all the way off the balance beam before you are allowed to touch the animal. Now that's time I walk back so you can make sure that I made it all the way. Okay, and then we have the books. Let's see, I think I'll try the puppy school book. This one has a hard cover, so we'll see how that goes. Balance on top of your head, and let's see. Now, if you don't make it, no problem. You just try it again. So I'm going to make a mistake on this one. Oh, I didn't make it. So no problem. I just try it again. If it was easy to do, it wouldn't be a challenge. So you just try it again until you succeed. And then you can try the next item. And there's no rush. You have as much time as you need to do it. We have a lot of time at home nowadays. So let's see. And I made it. So now I'll move on to the next one. I'll go ahead and try one of the cones on this one. So I'm going to try a cone. I'm going to be a cone head. Place it on top of my head. Again, you must take your hands away before you put your foot on the balance beam. Now that my hands are free of the item, I step onto the balance beam. Whoa, almost fell there. I was able to make it. And there we go. Now, if you get really good at these, you can also try doing this. So I made it to the end. Cone is still on my head. Let's see if you can go backwards without the item falling and without your foot touching any part of the ground. So far, still on my head. I have not touched the ground. And 
once I feel that I'm off the balance beam, I made it. All right, so then I could move on to the next one. Again, so now I'm going to try one of the balls. Whoops, I just dropped some of my eggs. So now I have the ball. I'm going to try this one on my head. Let's see if I can make it. This one's a little trickier to get to balance. So there we go. Hands are free. Step on to the balance beam. Let's see if I can make it all the way there. Got it. And now let's see if I can make it backwards. Again, this is a challenge. So you don't feel like you have to go backwards. Try it if you want to. And if you're having trouble, just stick with going forward. Ah, didn't make it. So I would have to try that one again. All right, so that's it. Gather as many items as you can from around the house. Try the challenges. Challenge your brother or sister. Challenge your parents. Okay, it's always fun to challenge people, but make sure in this time that we're only playing against people who are in our household. Okay, try to do this inside. If you need to do it outside, please make sure you're maintaining your social distance from everyone at this point. Right, and have fun. Now, after you've tried this challenge several times, and with all the different items, I want you to watch the next video, and we'll have a little discussion about some of the things that hopefully we learned during this activity. Hi, everyone. I hope you had a great time completing the Balance Beam Challenge. And now that you've completed it, let's talk about some of the science concepts that you may or may not have noticed while completing it. Now, to be successful at the Balance Beam Challenge, you had to do two things. Number one, keep the item in contact with your head the entire time and make it all the way off of the balance beam without your foot losing contact with the balance beam. Now, both of those relate to points of contact. Now, the more contact an, an object has with the other object, the better chance it has of staying balanced. So, for instance, the bag of rice. The bag of rice is what we call very pliable. In other words, it conforms to the shape of my head. It's very easy for it to hug the shape of my head. So it's more likely to stay on there. It also has a decent amount of weight, so it wants to stay on top of my head. Now, something that would have less contact with my head would be something like the book. The book, especially if it's a hard book, is not going to have much contact with the top of my head because now we have a hard, flat surface on top of a rounded surface. And as you can see, there's not much contact there. So a softer book would have more contact with my head. And then the most difficult object that you probably did was likely the ball, because the ball is round. And again, it's going to have much less contact with your head than something that is pliable or conforms to your head. So on my hand, you can see again, very little contact with the top of my hand, which doesn't look exactly like the top of my head, but again, not a flat to flat surface. Now, another object that likely was very difficult would be something like the water bottle. Now, the water bottle, it's not because it's round on the bottom, but it's very light and, again, has very little contact. So that is not going to stay up there very well. Now, if you practice this a lot, maybe you could do it, but this would be a very difficult one. Now, in terms of contact, to keep your foot in contact with the balance beam, the best choice would be to go forward like I was during the demonstration video. Now, a lot of my younger students like to turn sideways. The problem with this is now you have less point of contact between your foot and the balance beam, so it's much more difficult to stay on top of it. So again, points of contact are very important, and maintaining the maximum amount of contact between the two objects is the best way to stay balanced. Now, the other thing you may have noticed is that when you were trying to do the balance beam, your arms likely came out and moved away from your body. Now, even if you didn't intend on doing this, it happened. And if you don't believe me, do this right now. Close your eyes and spin around in a circle until you get dizzy, and your arms are gonna naturally come out and your feet are gonna spread further apart. Because the wider an object is, the more balance it's going to have. So if you spread your feet out or your arms come out, you're naturally going to have more balance. So this is a natural process your body will do without even thinking about it. Now, lastly, let's talk about fiber. I mentioned a couple of the items that I used, like lentils 
and the brown rice and my whole wheat bagel all have a high amount of fiber in them. Now, fiber is very important in our diet. And one way to know if a food has a lot of fiber is to pay close attention to a nutrition facts label. These are on every item that you can purchase at a grocery store. Move it a little closer so you can see a little better. So the item I want you to pay close attention to is the dietary fiber, that line right there. So lentils in a half cup serving, so as you can see, it's not very big. All it takes is this much of your lentils, and it has a total of four grams of fiber, which represents 14% of the daily value. Now, those numbers may not mean a whole lot, so let me make it simple. The higher that number is, the better the food is for you because the more fiber it has. Now, why is fiber important in our diet? It does a couple of things. Number one, it helps you to maintain a healthy body weight. So in other words, it'll help you to not become overweight. It will also help to control your blood sugar. Now, both of those things are related to diabetes. Now, diabetes is something that you've probably heard of and that somebody in your family may have. It's something that several people in my family actually have. Now, these things are not only related to high weight, but most uh, many health problems. For instance, right now, no doubt, we have all heard of the coronavirus. People who suffer from diabetes are more likely to be affected by coronavirus, which is something scientists have recently found out during this pandemic. So it's very important, not only now, but throughout your life, to try to maintain a high level of fiber in your diet to help you with your health. And it does a few other things in your diet as well, but those are the ones that I want you to really concentrate on at this point. So again, hope you had fun during the balance challenge. Don't be afraid to do it again or to come up with challenges of your own using balance. It's always fun to come up with ideas on your own. Until next time, have fun, stay healthy.